say, uh, Dan, who do you think would win in a fight, Pink Panther or Owl? Okay. Well, uh, questions. Why would they be fighting, for one? Well, Alf eats cats, and Pink Panther is a cat, right? Yeah, I guess in, like, a stretch of it. Like, do you think Alf is, like, looking for bigger fish, and that's why he's going for the panthers now? Well, he probably... Because house cats were sort of his thing. I mean, he probably ate all the house cats in the world, and now he's got to go for bigger game. He's got to... Well, it depends, because, like, Alf, when you think about it, he's sort of like your uncle who lives in Florida... Yeah. Like, that's who Alf is as a character. <laughs> like, you're, like, Florida Joe, who just sort of, you know, like, hey, Ellie, you, what's the deal with blah, blah, blah. Are you going like, to eat that just, cat? Yeah, just loafing around and eating cats, just like my uncle. But, like, I but, think like, I, he, would I, get, I, he would get hungry if he ran out of cats, right? Yeah, uh, but I don't think he has the, the know-how and the elbow grease to go about getting Well, he cats. is an alien, so would you assume... But you saw the cartoon, right? Like, the cartoon, he absolutely... Was even that's, like in his home planet flying ships and stuff, he was still like the loafer. I like, guess that's true. So, anyway, uh, Pink Panther, I think when he's backed into a corner, yeah, he would maul Alf to bits like he's claws underneath those pink, yeah, fingers. like he's obviously still got natural habits. Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Raised by, by Tunes. My name is Dan Little Dog Mason, and I'm Chad Big Dog Cook, and today we're gonna be reviewing. Two, Two stupid, stupid dogs. dogs. Yeah. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, that's right, Toonsters. Today we're going to be reviewing Two Stupid Dogs, created by Donovan Cook in September 5th, 1993. I think I'm related. No, you're not. Aww. He's talented. Damn it. Ended May 15th, 1995. A strong two-year run, or like one and a half years. Yeah. Uh, from this, they got two seasons, 26 whole episodes, about 39 segment episodes. And um, it was originally... Uh, a TBS show, Hanna Barbera produced and distributed through Warner Brothers Television. I I read that it was on syndication and TBS. Is that the same thing? Yeah, yeah. It? Oh, okay. It was at the I same was... time, syndication and TBS. I I always got confused by that. So. Uh, it it made its home, however, at Cartoon Network, which yeah. you and I, going talking yesterday, yes. realized that we haven't done on a, a Cartoon, Cartoon Network, Network show. banana. Banana? I don't know. I, just, I didn't want us to be on the same page like that. Oh. So, yeah, we, Toonsters, we haven't done Cartoon Network yet. No. And and was it called Cartoon Cartoon before Network? Or was it always Cartoon it was Network always Cartoon and they just Network. said Cartoon Cartoon at the end of a cartoon? That Cartoon Cartoon was a show. Really? Cartoon Cartoon! But that that was always said at the end of, like, Dexter and everything, I remember. No. Like, yeah, like, the logo came up, Cartoon Network, and it was like, Cartoon Cartoon. The, I think that was just because that's where they came from. Right, what oh, well. uh, what a cartoon was where people got their starts, and we'll talk about yeah, that. Yeah, okay, we'll get in. But we'll get, uh, there. We'll get there. Two Stupid Dogs uh, was voice. Uh, it, it made its home at Cartoon Network, but it was also very made popular years later on Boomerang, mm -hmm. which if you guys don't have Boomerang, you got to get it. And it it... it, it I mean, it was replayed, like, a couple separate... Like, it was from 2008 to 2009, and then 2011 to 2012, or... Yeah, it, it, right? it came in chunks. Yeah. And it was about the misadventures of two unintelligent canines. Yes, one a dachshund, and the other a... Uh, what was it? A sheepdog. Sheep a sheepdog. Sheepdog played by Brad Garrett. Hey, Raymond. <laughs> Hey. That sounds like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, that does, doesn't it? Raymond, I'm going to okay. <laughs> take some cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's kind of funny, though, that the show started on TBS because that's where everybody loves Raymond ended up. Everything's, everything's <laughs> tied circle, together. Full circle, folks. Now, before we get into this, we have a, a habit of not doing our serial accompaniments. That's true. So let's start off the bat. Well, all right. Well, I would obviously... After a night of crying into my pillow. Yep. Um, Wait, let me set up the okay, scene for yes. you. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay. Your date stands you up again. This Wait, how old am I? 
This age. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your date stands you up for the second time, but she promises she, she'll be there. Uh-huh. However, you find out when you get home that when you track her IP address, it's actually me trolling you into thinking you could have found true love. You are polishing your gun, looking into the mirror. Your eyes are dead, shark eyes, lifeless, nothing behind them. The yeah. man you once were is gone. However, you're in the mood for some cereal while you're watching Two Stupid Dogs. You're about to pull the trigger. What would you eat? So, hold on. <laughs> I'm Instead of putting the barrel of the gun in your mouth... What cereal a company would... So would I'm hungry, eat? but I want to commit suicide. Yeah, that's pretty, and, okay. and we all know that weighing the odds, right. you're going to eat first. So. That's, that's probably true. Um, <laughs> well, at, at the corner of my eye, I would say... Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would have to go with Cookie Crisp Ooh. because... Um, the original Cookie Crisp with the dog and the burglar, mm-hmm. um, before they changed it into a freaking wolf. I don't know why mm-hmm. that even sure context, but um, but yeah, no, I would go with Cookie Crisp obviously because it's got to do with the dog on the cover. Maybe dogs like cookies. Obviously, they're not allowed to eat cookies because of the whole chocolate thing. I mean, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> oh, I miss, I'll, I'll miss that dog every day. Yeah, I. Would Wait, go, whoa, whoa, oh. whoa, whoa. I got to set you up now. Okay, set up this, okay. this scenario. So, all right, you're at home. You um, woke up on a, char- a a bed of broken glass and lemon juice surrounding a puddle around you, right? Okay? Mm-hmm. And so you're moving around. You're getting cut up, and you move to the door, and uh, a box uh, opens up, and a TV comes through, and... Two stupid dogs is playing in front of you, and now, and now, um, then a bowl flies out. What do you request to your captor? So I'm captured. You're captured. Okay, yes. but they were kind enough to give me cereal and yeah. two stupid dogs. Yeah, that's like my life now. That's like. But fine. I mean, you're 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 sitting on a you know besides like the lemon glass. juice. Yeah, besides the lemon juice, that's. Sort of life for me now. Okay. I would go with a big bowl of cornflakes because the big dog constantly would hawk up a full ear of corn at in continuous episodes, Toonsters. So I think it's only fitting to have cornflakes. All right. Coughing up corn like my wife. <laughs> You're alone. You'll always be alone. Well, that's figurative. No. Or literal. I don't know what word I wanted to use there. Now, the beauty about Two Stupid Dogs was it was a very minimalistic cartoon as far as uh, the designs of the characters, the colors used. Not many wrinkles on the face, some would say. It wasn't a Dr. Katz shaky vision. No. <laughs> but it was it was nice, and it, was, uh, it had a lot of Craig McCracken influences mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. And this was before Craig McCracken was a name. That's we'll true. talk about that in a sec. But... The thing that keeps two stupid dogs fresh years down the road is that the dogs weren't stupid for the sake of being stupid. They weren't stupid uh, just to do ditzy, wacky things that endangered people Mm -hmm. or uh, were out of character. It wasn't stupid for the sake of being stupid. They were genuinely innocent, curious dogs trying to go about finding their next meal Mm -hmm. And although the plots could be summed up in one sentence for every episode, what would happen with that genuine childlike curiosity is what would attach viewers to it. Well, uh, I mean, you could could even say that the dogs themselves were half, like, kids or toddlers because they could actually speak to the human characters in the the show. Yeah. And, like, they're understood and everything. But... I mean, they they are dogs. They wouldn't know what certain things are like. What is a what is a cow? What is a you know? Um, they have a basic a farm. knowledge of things like food and bones and I cats. Mean, yeah, they, but they don't know what the yeah. world is yet. Yeah, they don't have uh, names for things like we like us. The higher on the food chain mm-hmm. would uh, be able to label. It's cute um, that you think you're up here with the people. I ate a lion once. Okay, that doesn't. 
We ate its heart. Don't throw me in this now. <laughs> anyway. Uh, there was, but the thing about Two Stupid Dogs was it didn't, uh, it didn't set up its own jokes. Like, no. it wasn't a Big Bang Theory. You know how it's... it's I, well, I, I wonder if they improv it because it was sort of a, um, a... As it went on, the questions just built on top of each other of what they didn't understand. It didn't feel improv but it certainly felt natural. It was natural. very organic. Yeah. In a sense where you could tell that the writers would follow a scene genuinely. Mm-hmm. And instead of saying, oh, they turn the corner... And this eight foot tropical mud chicken flies out and their eyes bug out. It wasn't it yeah, wasn't like a Tex happen. Avery sort of thing. No. It was a very grounded but um they uh they would take uh general storylines like we, what we said and mm-hmm. it would just sort of be like they wanted to go see a drive in to see what all the fuss is about and then mm-hmm. things would happen there. Or they wanted to go uh to film a dog food commercial and got Caught up in a wacky situation. Well, and and really, whatever situation they was, were in, um, the curiosity was there, but it was also the most important thing for them was the food. Like, there's food involved in this situation. Like, at the drive-in, there was food. They wanted it was to know the, the end game was. of every yeah, episode. That, every episode, it was about food, and they wanted food. The big dog got food. The little dog got food. Hopefully. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Not every time. And they also would do things that a lot of cartoons did, where they would take, they would do classic retellings of stories like Little Red Riding Hood, yep, or uh, um, Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. They would do that, except unlike the predictable sort of Mario Brothers Super Show esque, yeah. where they didn't take it and bring it to the the world that they were creating, mm-hmm. they actually organically would say, what's the natural flow? What's the next step uh, through an idiot's perspective that wouldn't just be like, this would be funny, but instead, this would actually happen from where we set ourselves up mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean... Do you want to talk about the voice actors? We had some... This... Okay, so... The big thing about Two Stupid Dogs was it was the start of a new generation of cartoons. The same way, uh, like we said, it came out September 5th, 1993. As you might recognize that date from past episodes Mm -hmm. here on Raised by Toons. Toons. No? No? That was not a... Oh, by the way, today today Raised by Toons is brought to you by Food. Food. No, just because there's a bunch of O's, you don't have to... Really? No, you don't. It don't have to do that. I mean, I brought to you by food. Like, but it just sounds so bland. You know, you want to go food. But you just did food. I think the audience would have liked that. They're thing. already. They already <laughs> shut this off. If Pro- you think for a second they're still here, but yeah, past episodes are raised by tunes. You'll notice that the September fifth, nineteen ninety three, shows were coming up like Rugrats, Doug, Ren and Stimpy, Animaniacs, Tiny Toons. These were all er- ushering in a new era mm-hmm. of cartoons that beforehand. Well, uh, could I, could we say that Hanna Barbera was on his way out at that time? Like instead of staying, I mean, he was he latched on to because he worked with. Um, McCracken you know, on this cartoon, but I mean, I don't think he put anything out after this. No, th- uh, this was the resurgence for Hanna Barbera. Oh, okay. So yeah. he wanted to come back. Yeah, yeah. Right. The before Two Stupid Dogs, Hanna Barbera Productions didn't have a successful show since the Smurfs. Wow, a that's, decade earlier. Yeah, and we know how good the Smurfs were. Not yeah, definitely better than the Snorks. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> Just had little Whoa. penises on the top of their head and mm. got into mundane, bland trouble. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll touch on those. We'll do snorks some other yeah. time because yeah. nobody cares. No there one was really no cares Gargamel. about snorks. It was just whatever boringness. <laughs> it was like Fraggle Rock if they took away any I kinda, sort of excitement. You kind of hope they actually drowned, but <laughs> it was impossible. Just put a stick in that little hole yeah, in like, the head. <laughs> anyway, right. on that morbid <laughs> note. We had some voice talents here, but mm-hmm. like I said, it was ushering in a new era, so they had unrecognized voice actors for the most part in that yes. time. Yeah. Uh, they had a few famous names, but 
Uh, some of them, maybe you guys have heard of Brad Garrett. Oh yeah, Raymond. Raymond. You know he, he was he was coming up in the ra- like I don't remember when uh, everybody loved Raymond started, but I thought it was like late late nineties, late 90s most likely. But he did Middle a lot of late. he did a lot of voice work within that time period. And um, Brad Garrett was uh, the big dog. Yeah, he was the big dog. Um, he Garrett. also also in the in the same cartoon though he played some various. Uh, side characters that just popped up, like, but he would change his voice slightly. Yeah, yeah. To uh, be like a woman or whoever else they interacted with. They also found Mark Schiff, who was a stand up comedian mm-hmm. that uh, creator Donovan Cook heard and want and thought the voice would be perfect, so they gave him a call. Uh, he... that, that would be a great, like, moment. If you were, you know, you were just talking in public and some guy just went. Hey man, I like I really like your voice. I want you. Would you like be interested in voicing our cartoon? That would be like, holy crap! That yeah, that, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, I would. Hanna Barbera Company. <laughs> but there was also uh, recognizable names like Jim mm-hmm. Cummings. Jim, no, Jim Cummings. It was Brian Cummings. Brian Cummings played Mr. Hollywood, but yeah. Jim Cummings played Morocco Mole. And oh, oh yes, in the. In the super secret... Super secret secret squirrel. squirrel. Now, let's talk about that for a okay. second. Uh, two Stupid Dogs broke up into a three-act show. The first act was Two Stupid Dogs, seven-minute storyline. Mm-hmm. The second was Super Secret Secret Squirrel episode, which was a what, not a remake, but um, a rekindling, a re... Well, yeah, the, the original was called just Secret Squirrel, and then they brought it back because Hanna Barbera was trying to come back, but he also wanted to bring something of his into the new. Well, it wasn't sh- his choice. It wa- oh, it wasn't his. So choice. in 1965, uh, the Adventures of Adam Ant and Secret Squirrel, uh, two separate entities. Not mm-hmm. they didn't form together, but they had a cartoon that pr- aired together in 1965. Uh, and then when Donovan Cook was presenting Two Stupid Dogs, it was a go. However. Uh, Hanna Barbera said, "You can pick any one of our past cartoons to revamp and start uh. n- over." So, with the help of Craig McCracken and some other famous names like uh, Gendy Tarkovsky, mm-hmm. with that you'll recognize uh, from Dexter, Powerpuff Girls, um, Samurai Jack. Uh, yeah, he he, uh, he said that Secret Squirrel was his favorite character growing really? up, so he made that the thing and. It was so refreshing because I don't know if anybody remembers. I mean, look at our audience. Who am I talking to? Of course you're, you remember. And you're so pretty, too. Mm. But it was uh, uh, bland. It was bland as hell back yeah. in the day. Uh, when you're being topped by Adam Ant, you, your cartoon sucks. But they revamped <laughs> this, and it was really good. They had better gadgets, cooler uh, villains of the week, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and... Uh, his sidekick Morocco Mole, voiced by Jim Cummings, was hilarious. The I, what did it turn out? He was a flying squirrel too. No, like, no, he could fly in a, I, his jet. I thought he had a. I thought he could like put out when he, like underneath his trench coat when he like put out his arms, he could kind of glide. If he did, around. it wasn't a. a hmm. A Maybe I, I'm, I'm possibly thinking thing. of something else then. But go, uh, go but on. In the 60s version, they had humans and animals interacting. Oh. Uh, in this version, all the human characters were replaced by animals. Like, his uh, his boss, Q, mm-hmm. was replaced with a buffalo. <laughs> and uh, his there was a secret agent squirrel girl instead of another thing. Anyway, so they had the little backup segments for those things between the two stupid dogs. And uh, speaking of just the hybrid of this this thing of two stupid dogs, uh, Spoonco, that you guys might recognize from our Ren and Stimpy episode, mm. they worked on some of the animation on this. And uh, it's been said in the past that that two stupid dogs is a ripoff of Ren and Stimpy. I completely disagree. I have to agree with your disagreement. <laughs> There we go. Mm, yeah. Um, well, I mean, the because it wasn't as grotesque. It, Far from. There was rarely any like skin pulling or 
nerve endings or any like inside or close-ups to the skin where it's just very detailed and very uh, um, not well taken care of, you know, themselves. The storylines were far more innocent. And yes, yeah, they, they're, well, actually, there were some moments in um, Two Stoop Dogs where like at the, at the drive-in theater episode where they're actually in the drive-in and then it, it zooms out and you see all the, it's like, why is everybody here? And then you mm-hmm. see all the cars and they're bouncing around and obviously everybody's getting <laughs> freaky. That's why you go to the job. Well, you get, you know, you get a splash down. And then when America realized that people don't like fucking in cars no more, they got rid of all the jobbing. And then also there was an, uh, the kid brings the dog to class and he's like, these are boy dogs. Did you know how to tell that these are boy dogs? And he holds the dog upside down and two guys go, oh, at the dog's penis. And then the girl goes, ooh, and like, what? So, <laughs> but I think instead of comparing that to a Ren and Stimpy-esque humor, that is more of a childhood innocence yeah. with uh, adult humor flying yeah. over their heads. Yeah. Like, I, I obviously missed that when I was younger, and I saw that. But now seeing it, I was like, what? That was there the whole time? Yeah, it's... Just, it's the whole time. And, and Ren and Stimpy... The animation was very, uh, what's his name, Bob Wurz or uh, something. You know the guy that's famous for that look? Yeah. Of, like, the bouncy, sort of, like, gross-looking people. I'm, yeah. Like, Two Stupid Dogs was, the animation was very flat and simplistic. Mm-hmm. The whole show was very minimalized, uh, and it had, like, a, a smooth little uh, jazz undertone throughout yeah, the entire background. it was very background. light. No, like... Uh, dark moments between characters. There's... It was closer to Rocco's Modern Life than Ren and Stimpy. Well, like they they never had an attitude other than happy. The two dogs. Yeah. They were always just jovial. They would sometimes fight just... if it was about food. Well, yeah, they. But it was nothing. But serious. it would be. I mean, like the only bickering they would do is like over a toilet seat, and it's like I want the toilet seat. No, I want the toilet seat. And yeah. Just silly, kind of banter. So uh, there's no real. Real connection between Ren and Stimpy or Two Stupid Dogs. But Two Stupid Dogs, through the help of Fred Cyber and Larry Huber, mm-hmm. uh, the producers of it, they they were also working, they later worked on uh, What a Cartoon. Now, What a Cartoon came out a little bit later where they had the, the artists from the area submit pilots of different characters storylines from this we we got dexter's laboratory samurai oh, yes. jack powerpuff girls uh seth mcfarlane had things on there really? Kids next door wow. yeah um we had uh we got all these famous people uh uh fairly odd parents what's his name dan oh um jeez no no not dan i'm thinking dan povenmeyer but that's oh, not it okay. uh butch hartman oh butch hartman <laughs> Like, they got their starts here. So, Two Stupid Dogs not only ushered in a new generation of Cartoon Network shows, mm. they brought in the uh, an entire new uh, way of getting into the Ilk. business. Ilk. 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 They got a, an entirely new way of getting into the business and breaking in, and it was, instead of just keeping it tight-knit insider, they finally opened the doors. They loosened those lips up. And, uh, okay, okay. Uh, no, uh, no. 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 Okay. Mm-mm. Nope. I'm ah, sorry. Nope. Sorry. Did I? Did you lose your? Yeah, I did. Mind? You new ilk. So anyway, the new. Okay. You can see in the episodes when you're watching. You can. You can. How every director or uh, animator will have a certain touch that is theirs and yes. you can tell like when you watch powerpuff girls you're like that's a craig mccracken when you watch foster's home you're like that's well, no. a craig mccracken well no you watch the... butch hartman from like fairly odd parents or danny mm-hmm. phantom you're like oh that's butch hartman you can tell well no wait the powerpuff girls was tchaikovsky no that was dexter and samurai jack no he did he did he did uh powerpuff girls as well did he yeah oh craig mccracken but maybe they the joined creator oh maybe Maybe did a little, a couple episodes. I don't know. They probably all worked in the same. They, boat. Yeah, they probably they were in the same freaking building. Yeah, you know, so it's probably 
It's all connected, folks. Yeah, definitely. Because Samurai Jack, they even say that the Powerpuff Girls share the same universe. That's true. Uh, look it up. That's a post-apocalyptic theory. But, it's... like, they all had their imprint on it. Yeah. And it all came from two stupid dogs, which... Let's talk about for a minute. Let's talk about it. What do you want to talk about? This show was nominated multiple times for Daytime Enemies. It lost to the Rugrats. Obviously. Because, you know, it came out the same time, so Rugrats was still good. Rugrats still had those fresh diapers. Yeah. If if you would... Hey, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Brought to you by food. Food. No, still, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so when Rugrats was still in its prime in the first few seasons, uh, it lost... uh, Two Stupid Dogs lost to it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think... I, I don't know. I'm still on that Ren and Stimpy thing. I think it's more like Cow and Chicken than Ren and Stimpy, but... Well, even Cow and Chicken's more like Ren and Stimpy to. than... Yeah, that's what I meant. I think oh. Cow and Chicken are more like Ren and Stimpy yeah. than Two Stupid Dogs. Wee, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck was what that? What was that? I don't know. I was trying know. to do the devil. Oh, yeah. The big red guy. Yeah. Oh, wait. I gotta... I gotta... Um, you know, so if... You know how they're taking all these old shows and making them into movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done this in a, epi- a past episode or two, mm-hmm. but like if they made a live action movie, who like obviously they would be do- live action dogs, but they would have voiceovers. But but there's also the human characters. So who would you cast as those characters of actors today um, in in any of those roles? You know, I thought about this. Yeah, and I'm not. I can't unsee. Big Dog and Little Dog mm-hmm. as not being Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. I oh, can't unsee it. Like, uh, like a Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's just because it's so on the nose. It's True. not creative. No. It's not by any means like, oh my god, I never would have thought yeah. of that. It's, it's so, like, because Jeff Daniels has that sort of voice, like, Lloyd, Lloyd. You yeah. know, and then like Jim Carrey's the super hyperactive one all the time, and both. that's true. So I'm, I'm that is true. I immediately think two stupid dogs, mm. and then so maybe do you, I wonder if the creators of Fairly Brothers ever watched two stupid dogs? Maybe oh, they were inspired. When did that come out? Uh, Not ninety three, so it came out later than ninety three, right? Like what 96? the the first Down and Dumber movie? Yeah, no, it was ninety like five, right? So maybe they saw that. It's possible. So maybe I'm not even that wrong. Maybe, maybe that's what they had in mind. Hey, they do. They are dog. And hey, in and in, in the movie, remember the big guy that was like a bad guy, but he was traveling the gas with them. Man. Yeah, the gas man. <laughs> he, How do they know I got he, gas? He could have been Mr. Hollywood, like a Mr. Hollywood type of guy. And yeah. Like, for those of you that don't know, Mr. Hollywood is the man. If you sort of remember the episodes. He's the man that shows up in everything as different characters. He is just Mr. Hollywood. He's pretty much the equivalent to uh, the character in a Three Stooges episode, like uh, where he's either the employer of the Three Stooges or he's mm-hmm. like some guy who's like, oh, I need you to cater this, or he's asking them to do some kind of job. Yeah. And he's that guy. He's sort of that guy, but like he's just in um, even more. St- more uh, extravagant roles like uh, tar- like a Tarzan actor. Yeah, he was a stuntman um, in stunt the Tarzan man, movie. Uh, farmer. Uh, I think they call know. him Mr. Hollywood because he just takes on the role of yeah. whatever thing is going to be at Makes the time. Sense. Uh, oh, I also, I think John Goodman would Ooh. play Mr. Hollywood. I was, you know, I was thinking that. I was thinking that John Goodman would be perfect for that role. Isn't that cute? But it's round. Yeah. And the, although like for Big Dog, I was I was sort of considering, um, Ice T would be funny. What? Yeah, I'm Ice T, and I'm hungry for some food. So like, oh, so <laughs> Big Dog would go in on monologues sometimes that were very out of character but oh, hilarious. Yes. And depending on where he was, he was confused as an ambassador before. He gave love advice to a child named Kenny, uh, yeah. uh, who is we I love as a character. Very He's just nerdy little redheaded shit. Uh, Gingers. But he, he goes into these big things, and it's uh, I'm sorry. It's just uh, it's very surprising to see 
So can you tell them? I had to do it. Wait, oh, to show them why you said, kept saying it? Yeah. Yeah, they were. Isn't that cute? He says it in every episode. That, and, I mean, and, that is a John Goodman right? kind of role. He would do that. Like, otherwise, I would say Tom Hanks. Well, Tom Hanks could be anything. That's true. He is. Hey, Tom, if you're listening, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> we love you, Tom. You're great. You're awesome and big. You're you're awesome in everything, Tom. Anyway. Yeah, I'm the captain now. Uh, I'm the captain now, Tom. <laughs> anyway. All right. So, uh, what were we talking about? Um, we were... The characters. Get, let's talk about... Ca- oh, yeah. Let's get into more of the characters. So, some of the ancillary characters that made it really fun, besides Secret Squirrel, Morocco mm-hmm. Mole... Uh, let's stick to the two dogs universe. Okay. We had uh, Red, who was a little uh, based off a little Red Riding Hood character, yes. who would talk normal but then shout yes. bits of her sentence all the time. Uh, she sounded like Tweety Bird from Tiny Toons, and f- for all I know, she could be the same actress. But I, 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 for me, she sounded like a mix between Dot from Animaniacs and uh, a little bit of a. Uh, some other character from <laughs> the Tiny Toons world. Tweety. No, like Babs or something, sort of. And it's, but, but uh, Trust McMeal wasn't in. The oh no, film. Mindy, Mindy, Mindy from Tiny Toons. Who's said, Mindy? The, the the Black Elmira. El no Elmira. Sorry, oh. I was thinking of Elmira. I don't know why I kept thinking Mindy. It's yeah. like, why'd you go black, dude? That was oh weird. no, because there was one, but I don't oh. think I don't know what her name was. Well, she I'm Elmira like a, though. She was like la 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 whenever she. Like, did that kind of thing? It sounded la, like la, 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 la. Uh, and fall, I can see that. You know, that was just me. Was a... I remember when, when I was younger, and this is a real story. They had a contest for the Super Bowl, uh, where it was the two stupid dogs, uh, uh, two stupid. Yeah, it was the two stupid dog challenge, mm-hmm. where you would dress up your dog, uh, in something silly. Take a picture or video and send it in, and the winner was entered into the Super Bowl. Oh. And then they had a Super Bowl uh, marathon, uh, the Super, yeah, the Super Bowl marathon where they played two hours of two stupid dogs episodes. Really? Yeah, but you, I remembered uh, trying to put like toilet paper around my dogs. Well, they probably didn't like that. They were not thrilled. Uh, but I rem- do you not remember that at all? No, or like, no, no. I mean, I could had, lie right did now. Did you ever enter into <laughs> those contests, though? Like the, the toy run for Nickelodeon? No, my Or my the pa- Smell-O-Vision? My, where my, you got the, the smell card from Wendy's? My parents shunned me away from False Hope. Yeah. And so I just didn't That is just didn't evident. <laughs> that is, you were just drowning in false. I mean, there was at one point I tried to c- collect all those box tops, but they threw them out. So. I told you I did that for Hey Arnold before, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh I was into like when the whenever they told us to get involved, I did. Although I did I never won. Oh, well. So that actually no, no, I did win. I won uh the smell vision thing where they gave you the the card from Wendy's and you would have to watch uh uh Stick Stickly on Nickelodeon. And, and scratch it, it off, and yeah, you would win if you got them all. You smell though? Did he smell? No, it was like, it was like, oh, here, look at these strawberries, and then like they'd have the little icon on the screen, and you'd scratch it because you had it on your card or something. Why is that? I don't remember. S- Twenty years ago. That doesn't make sense. It's like scratching. That's like bingo or something. Yeah, it was shit. something like that. But, but it was why scratch they? And snow. Yet they called it. S- <laughs> smell a vision because you could smell along uh, with the TV. They could get away with anything back then. You were such a miserly old fuck. You know that? <laughs> so, oh, these kids and their happiness. Ah, uh, jeez. Uh, for somebody who co-hosts a cartoon podcast that hey, no one listens to, you know what? Uh, you don't even have the energy to yell back. No, the e. I was gonna say uh, I'm a kindred spirit with Egon, one of the Ghostbusters. He had a slinky, but he straightened it, you know. And I can, I can, I can connect with that. I can, can you? Yes. So I'm. I think that the Toonsters deserve uh, some funny moments from the show. Okay. 
Now, uh, I can start, since you obviously have no soul or anything to drive you out of bed in the morning. So, since I'm loved, and I love... Cat food. <laughs> Just go outside. <laughs> I'll do this whole fucking show by myself. You have no idea. Hey, I'm the post-it guy. I leave post-its for you. There's nothing on your post-its. You have no notes. That's because... I am the post guy. You got lucky that these dogs didn't have names for you to remember. <laughs> you got lucky that you called it Big Dog and Little Dog. You got lucky. Uh, no, I uh, watched the show, so I know. I know things. Anyway, I want to say that one of my funniest moments, uh, mm-hmm. there's two episodes. Actually, oh, there's a few. Anyway. Oh, Toonsters, he's going to go through all of them, folks. Toonsters, if you're watching the show, which it's hard to sort of find, you can sort of do it through Vimeo and YouTube. Uh, I would recommend buying the DVD. Or just download Torrents. Don't, don't do that. Why? Because you can't. It's say not this. on DVD. You can't. You, it's not like they're making they money. Are. Is it not? What? No, I, I've never found them on DVD. That's true. I haven't really seen it. They did have the the Super Bowl thing on DVD with two hours of it. Oh, that's. I had it on VHS. That's like probably really rare and like cost two hundred dollars on Amazon or eBay or well, something. Well, I'll sell it for two hundred then. Anyway, Ooh. there's an episode called Hollywood's Ark where they have Mr. Hollywood as Noah and they let the two dogs on board mm. and the dogs are fixated on just finding the next meal, but they're on a boat full of what could possibly be the next meal. So oh, they're yeah. eating and gnawing on the unicorn's horns to the point where they come off and that's why there's no more unicorns. That's how it happened, folks. They let the lions out of the cage they eat all the food in one sitting mm-hmm. to the point where Mr. Hollywood is about to throw them overboard with hilarious consequences. <laughs> what happens when they get thrown overboard? They don't get thrown overboard. You just watched that episode with me. I well, you the way you ended your sentence was I didn't hilarious like consequences. Hilarious consequences. That does that kind of. You just watched the episode. I'm just saying for the audience's sake. I'm asking for the audience's. No, sake. no, I left it open ended <laughs> for a reason. I left it open ended so the audience w- wouldn't know the end and can watch it on their own. Not for you to be like. Well, what did happen? <laughs> That's not why I did that. Not for you. I didn't lob that to you. <laughs> for fuck's sake, Toonsters. How the fuck are we still like 16 episodes in? Woo! God, did you ever think we'd make it this far from the David and the Gnome days? Oh, gee. I, you know. We were still trying to figure out how to play it? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, it's a miracle we've reached this far. Uh, and we're not probably going to get much farther. No, not at all. Uh, what were some funny moments for you? Some funny moments for me. Well, the w- one where um, the uh, the oh yeah, they're they're at the well. I mean, it was it was bits and pieces. It was never like a steady flow of funny for me. It was more like small small jokes that were made, like um, the. Uh, in in the drive-in theater one where uh, they're watching um, the intro with the you know popcorn food and stuff, mm-hmm. and then uh, all of a sudden the other food eats um, the hot dog. The hot dog, yeah. This is like cover me with mustard, cover me with this, cover me with custard. Get out of here! <laughs> and then like the the soda just bites his head off, and I'm like, oh my god! But I, I found that it's food. That with faces was, hey, on it's faces on. It's food with faces on. But, you know, I mean, really what attracted me to the show was just uh, Little Dog, because his New York kind of uh, light-hearted voice was just hilarious how he's like, hey, what's the deal with this? You know, it's Bob. very, oh, jeez. You know, but, uh, I mean, another, let me think of another one that was, another part that was uh, funny. Um, I'd have to say the, uh, well, you write about segments. Well, yeah, it's 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 very it's very it's a quick. If you're show. not if you're not looking, you'll you can miss the visual jokes because it's not all dialogue either. It's sometimes like very, it'll just be a glancing look, yeah. or a pause after so, yeah. an awkward situation. Like with um, it's with very... with that scene I was talking about where the kid brought the dogs to show and tell, and he shows everyone the dog's penis. And the girl just goes, ooh, like that. That was just like... It was quick. It out wasn't... of nowhere, it was, 
you know, like if I wasn't paying attention, I'd be like, why cheat? Why'd that go? Who or who went? Yeah, because it sounds graphic as yeah. Chad describes it. Either no, I'm I'm Where's making it more. The dog dick tri- you don't even see the dog dick. Okay? Obviously, Chad. Red Rocket, man. High five. Don't. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> but he's he's absolutely right for once in his goddamn life. <laughs> Uh, the segments were what made this show really funny. Uh, like we said, the episodes were just dogs go to the movie theater. However, where they found themselves at the end of the episode, always not really an arc in character development, but however, there was an arc in... <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm thinking about it. No. Well, no, there there is a slight arc. It all. I mean, it always they, ends. They with... heighten the scene, which yes. for those that are interested in improv, uh, understand that term, where you'll heighten the scene, and to where you don't know what the end result is going to be, but you do know that you need to bump it to the next level as much as you can, and that's sort of the goal they had. Well, like with that the farm episode that. Um you brought up earlier the it started out slow like what's a farm and all that and like it led into them trying to grow their own corn so they could eat it and the jokes that went on were that they were going about it all wrong and like they were just trying to understand and get it right and like find some way to get food obviously i don't even know if i'm making a point with what i'm just talking about I, i think i'm just talking right now I'm just talking. The point was, <laughs> it was, but the, the between the hyperactive little dog and the the calm, complacent big dog that once in a while had gems of wisdom, the show was really funny, and it was new, and it was genuine at the time. It was before we we thought of things like Dexter's Laboratory and uh, Powerpuff Girls. Before that sort of humor and art was became an accepted medium. And just sort of a foundation of, of car, com, bleh, cartoons as we mm. see them today. That was new. Because at the time, it was either high-budget things like Animaniacs and Tiny yeah. Toons. Or it was sort of lower, but uh, the animation was all over. Like Ren and Stimpy, Doug, Rugrats, where it wasn't... Uh, a consistent. It wasn't a consistent thing. Yeah. So they... And the fact that what a cartoon... And two stupid dogs opened the door for a whole new generation that started in 93 and is still being continued today with new shows. Very true. Entered in voices like Tom Kenny, uh, yeah. that we wouldn't have SpongeBob the way it is. Oh. Like the, How weird would that be? It's, yeah. Like, the thing is, we are, as much as the show is good for quick laughs, it's even better to recognize... The, the hidden, history and the, the... The hidden potential that it had to spread upon the world. Yes, The Chad. kinetic energy. It no divulged Chad. from... No. no? Wrong direction? Yeah, I think you had it and oh. then you lost it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rate this thing. Oh, for sa- sorry, I misheard that. Like, <laughs> Nope. This is why. <laughs> this is why, Chad. Anyway... Two stupid dogs because of all the reasons I just said and the likability of the characters. Like I said, they weren't jerks. They weren't stupid for stupid sake and they weren't annoying. The fact is they were just innocent. And I don't know if how many dog owners out there are listening, but when you're trying to train a dog and they do anything before they get to what you're trying to get them to do and the sheer innocence and devotion and the actual trying they do before they can actually get it to make you happy is exactly how these dogs are they they try and they're genuine about trying but they don't grasp the concept and that is true blue four out of five balls four out of five balls huh all right well um i'd have to rate the show uh well obviously me and uh, my friend paul giamatti we we talk about it often yeah and yeah you know, and, um, well, I, I would say... Do you get the clip from that conversation or no? I mean, yeah, I mean, he's kind of here, sort of. He was, is, is that who that is? Yeah, he I, was just sitting there in the back I just there. thought like, that was Chaba. Hey, how's it going? I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just visiting Chad for the weekend, and, you know, that's just... 
I was in Planet of the Apes with Tim Burton. Thanks, Paul. Go back on my right. blanket. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah, Two Stupid Dogs, If I would say, you know, if you're a dog person in general, like Dan was going on about, you know, he's, he's a big dog guy, uh, you'll enjoy the show. It's very, like, it doesn't mistreat dogs in any sense like rah, 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 just barking away or any it's very like um shows their curious side and that that you know curious side that you often see with your own dog or with someone else's dog you know they're sniffing your crap so they're curious they're wondering what's going on and uh they smell your dog you know they smell my dog there's a world unexplored that donovan cook took us through he introduced tons of new voice talent to us i wasn't done rating and that's it for us. Uh, uh, no, uh, okay. So to the rating, to the actual rating now. <laughs> uh, I give it a four out of five, and um, four out of five corn husks. Okay. Because, like we said, he coughed up. Yeah, I don't. An ear no, they corn. know. They know. You don't have to explain it to them. I guess that's why they listen for 45 fucking minutes. Well, you know, that's why they're here. That's well, why. Toonsters, I say you watch this show. Like we said, it's hard to find. Find it. It's hilarious. It holds up. Um, it's it's subtle humor, but it's worth watching. And that's going to do it for us today. Yeah, I mean. Raised by Toons. Raised by Toons. My, no, you don't have to do the extra <laughs> oh, O's. sorry. Jesus. Anyway, my name is Dan Little Dog Mason. And I'm Chad Big Dog Cook. And remember, if you weren't raised by tunes, you weren't raised right. Ain't that cute, but it's wrong! Thanks for listening to the Raised by Tunes podcast. Be sure to visit their website at www.raisedbytunespodcast.com. If you haven't already, subscribe to their podcast on iTunes, and don't forget to follow them on Twitter and Facebook. Tune in next week to listen to two grown men who peaked in middle school try to relive their glory days on Raised by Tunes.